Hey there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walters World. We're in Toronto, Canada, one of the coolest cities to check out in North America. Well worth coming to see. And even though there's cool stuff to see here in Toronto, like the St. Lawrence Market or the CN Tower behind me, there's stuff you're gonna hate. And today what we have for you are basically just 10 things that we hate about traveling. So let's get started. What are the 10 things you're gonna hate about traveling? Well, the first thing you're gonna hate about traveling is the price. I'm not gonna lie to you, traveling is not free. You pay for what you get in terms of hotels, food, sites, things like that. It does cost a lot to travel. We do have videos on how to mitigate those costs, you know, how to travel less. For example, staying at apartments instead of hotels, so then you can eat at home as aside from going to restaurants, traveling in off seasons like November or February when tickets and hotels are cheaper, all kinds of things like that. So what's the second thing you're not gonna like about traveling? So the second thing you're not gonna like about traveling are the crappy tourist service experiences. You know, we're here in Stockholm and you know, service in Sweden isn't the best, but it's not too bad. But the thing that happens is when I go to the tourist places, like on the main shopping streets and stuff like that, is you don't get as good a service as you do off the main streets. And when you go into places like Venice or Pisa in Italy, which are huge tourist draws, the usual service levels drop significantly. And therefore I get people that say, oh, well Venice is totally Holy crap, and Pisa's not even worth it. Well, yes, Pisa's just the tower, but Venice is amazing. But you're right, the service in Venice isn't so good. And the Italian food in, in Venice isn't that good because they have so many tourists and they know, you know what, there's tourists here today, there'll be tourists here tomorrow, and there'll be tourists here from a year from now, regardless how I treat these tourists today. And that's what really sucks about sometimes when you travel is you do get that crappy tourist service. So what I recommend you do is, like what I did here in Stockholm, I've got friends here. So I asked them, where should I eat? Eat. where should I go out to get the best service the best experience and they'll give you those insider tips so you don't have the bad tourist experiences so if you don't have local friends ask the concierge or the front desk they'll have their favorite places and they can give you some ideas okay so what else you're not gonna like about traveling well, we're in Milan now and for the third thing you're not gonna like about traveling is sometimes you go to places that are overrated Milan, you think it's one of those places you have to go because you've heard of the fashion scene and all these things, but honestly, Milan isn't even in my top 15 places to see in Italy. And sometimes you do get disappointed because you're thinking, oh, Milan must be famous, Brussels is famous, so there's stuff I should go see there. And it's not always the case. Brussels and Milan are overrated. If you want to go see the Leaning Tower of Pisa, literally, it's a Leaning Tower, there's a cool church, and that's it. And sometimes that can be one of those things that frustrates you about traveling is you do get these places that are clunkers. You're like, can I take a mulligan and get that day I spent in Wavigo back? You can't obviously, but that's one of the things that might disappoint you when you travel is there are some overrated places. That's why you wanna make sure you look up and you ask people that have gone there. You do your research to find out is it worth going to, yes or no. So that's the third thing I don't like about traveling. What's the fourth thing? We're in Oslo, Norway. This is the Royal Palace behind me. And the fourth thing you're gonna hate are the tour groups that come through. Because when you're an independent traveler and you're trying to see a site and then you see a huge group of tourists, whether they're German or Japanese or American, they're coming like, oh my God, oh my God, what do I do? Do I run faster and see everything faster so I don't get like run over by them? Or do I sit back and wait and get stuck behind them? That's the thing with tour groups, they can be great if you're not sure what you wanna see or you're not feeling comfortable about the country you're going to. Tour groups can be very helpful. But if you're an independent traveler, oh my goodness, those tour groups will run you over or get in the way. Or what happens to us a lot of times, we'll go to sites like Versailles outside of Paris and the tour group will come in and you can't get around them, you can't get through them, and you can only get trampled over by them. And the tour guides do not care about anybody else. All they care about is their tour and their tips they get from those tours. I've been in some before where literally they're screaming. We were in Quebec City. Okay, I was filming my videos on Quebec and this lady is behind me just screaming in public. I'm like, what are you doing, lady? He's like, I'm talking to my tour group, shut up. I'm like, okay, crazy. So just know the fourth thing you're gonna hate is when those tour groups come through and run you over. We've had them push us out of the way, push my wife out of the way, push my kids out of the way. I mean, I'm like, what are you guys doing? You're normal people. What happens you get in this group? It gets kind of crazy. Now, the fifth thing you're gonna hate about travel is bad weather. Now here, look, we got beautiful sun coming on me here in Gothenburg. But you know what? We've been traveling around yesterday. We were in rainstorms in Oslo. 
and we couldn't enjoy going to enjoy the city because we got all soaking wet. Uh, and if you're traveling and you get a bad weather day, that's one of the things that makes the worst. I'm going to the beach. No, I'm not because there's a hurricane. Yes, it's happened to us before. Okay, or you know, I want to go out and see the city, but it's pouring down rain. Or you're in Tucson, Arizona. I want to go see the Desert Museum, but it's 110 degrees outside. Maybe not. Bad weather is one of the things that sucks about traveling. So what I recommend is prepare yourself for that. Find things you can do if it's a rainy day. What museums you'd like to go to. Are there any indoor activities to take the kids? Things like that. So the sixth thing you're going to hate about traveling are your missed connections and your canceled flights. Because there's nothing worse than trying to fly, in some pl fly someplace, you get to the airport and boom! Canceled shows up on the board and it ruins your day. Then you got to figure out how do I rebook my flight? How do I get to someplace else? All these things and it will drive you crazy when you try to do it. And then also the missed connections. If your flight is late or if you're here in Europe and you've only got like 10 minutes between trains, I get off one train then I got to figure out the platform. By the time I get to the platform, the train is going bye-bye. And that's why the sixth thing you're going to hate about traveling is the missed connections you get and canceled flights or trains that are out there that are bound to happen and ruin your day. Okay? So be prepared. Know when the next trains are, the customer service people so they can get you another ticket or I'll book you onto another plane because otherwise it'll drive you crazy. So we're here in Ottawa, Canada and the seventh thing you are going to hate about traveling is <laughs> you stink. Okay, when you travel for a while, you're most likely not going to get a chance to hit a laundromat and you're going to start stinking up. Your underwear, your socks and all these kind of things can get a little stinky and you'll notice some of your other travelers when you're backpacking around can get that way as well. So what should you do? One, we always bring a little thing of, of washing detergent with us in a little non-leak container and we wash our privies, our underwear and our socks and, and some of our t-shirts. We wash those, especially the underwear, every night in order to keep them clean so they go longer. But you know what you're going to have to do is ask the hotel or the hostel where you're staying ask them do you have laundry one because sometimes they have self-serve laundry you do it yourself which is cheap or they'll say oh we do laundry for you which is usually super expensive so what you should ask them is hey is there a laundromat around here that i can use okay but because you don't want to stink when you're traveling because then no one wants to talk to you but that's the seventh thing you're not going to like about traveling is the fact that you stink so the eighth thing you might not like about international travel is driving not everywhere you go can you take a bus or you can take you know a train we're here in iceland and you need to have a car when you're here a four-wheel drive car okay or, or jeep that's what we're taking and when you're driving around of these countries yes if you go to england and scotland and stuff they drive on the other side of the road and that can be quite daunting and hard to get used to or roundabouts or how do the lights function because here it goes red yellow green yellow red whereas in the u.s it goes red green these kind of things can throw you off, okay? But also, you know, for example, here in Iceland, they've got one lane bridges. So you're going down two lanes and all of a sudden, ooh, one lane. Oh my God, I about had a heart attack when I was driving, my wife too. And that can be a bit daunty when you are traveling, okay? If you're gonna be driving when you're traveling, make sure, you know, you get the insurance package, but also look up some of the signs and, and things like that before you go so you know where it's no parking and what's one way direction and these kind of things. Also, read up on advice on driving on the left side of the road or the right side of the road, just so you have a better idea before you go. And also, when you get your car, ask the people there, hey, what are some, where do people usually have their accidents? I know we were in Lisbon, and the lady said, you know, my, my dad was driving out of the airport in Lisbon, hit one of the posts on the side in the parking garage, busted up the side of the van. The lady said, oh yeah, people do that all the time. Well, why didn't you tell us? And she said, well, you didn't ask. So make sure you ask what are some of the problems people have, okay? So I hope that helps. So the ninth thing you're not going to like about traveling, oh, we're in Copenhagen, Denmark now. The ninth thing you're not going to like is, well, it's the budgeting and the planning. Because when you're looking at your budget, how much you're going to spend every day, it can be tough because the variation in prices in Europe is unbelievable. For example, let's just look at a beer. Here in Copenhagen, it's $8 a beer, okay, when you go to the bar. In Portugal, it's about a dollar. Okay, so that's a pretty wide variance on, you know, drinking. What about eating? Here in Denmark, you're going to spend about $25 per meal, okay, like on a plate. 
in Italy, you're spending about you know 15 to 17 dollars. Portugal, 12 to 10 dollars. So you start to see as wow, there's some pretty wide variations in terms of how much money I want to spend on the everyday things. Okay, so that can be tough to budget all those things out. But also, it's tough to plan these things. You know, I've got two weeks, or I've got 10 days, or I got one month. Where should I go? One of the that's one of the biggest questions I get. And what you need to do is focus on the things that you really want out of your visit. You know, if you're a big fan of Italy and, and, and the Romans, well, you know what, spend your time in Italy and Greece and get a lot of that historic perspective of the Romans and the ancient Greeks. Maybe that's what you should do. Or if you're like, no, I want to I have a cheap beach party vacation, well, then you're going to Spain and you're going to uh, Portugal and you have a good time with those, all right? So focus on those things and that's what you really need to do your research for to make sure you're picking the right places for you, for your trip, and the right places for your budget. And that leads us into the tenth thing you're not going to like, is if you're taking public transport or the trains and buses and things like that, there's not always a lot of space. So if you have lots of luggage or big luggage, sometimes there's not a Always space for it so sometimes it's on your lap sometimes it's in the way sometimes it's getting stolen so make sure when you are travel if you are going to be on trains and buses and stuff like that pack light and pack small because remember you're the one that has to lift it up above your head put it in the places find places for it and keep your eyes on it okay oh we're at Constantine's Arch here in Rome so those are 10 things you might not like about traveling but let's be honest we all love to travel and it. it's fantastic to do so if you want to know about 10 things you're gonna love about traveling check out our other video 10 things you love about traveling and some of our other videos at waltersworld.com we're also on Twitter and Facebook and we really appreciate your license subscriptions and if there's things that you don't like about traveling please put it in the comment section below we always like to hear other people's problems as well so we can find new solutions so have a great time in au revoir from paris france bye and we love traveling so keep traveling <laughs>